by Riverside. Welcome to Dance Talk with Joanne Carey, where the dance world connects, the conversations inspire, and where we are keeping them real. I'm your host, Joanne Carey, and today I'm joined with Robin Fountain, who is a conductor. He is also um, a conductor that I've been getting to know for the past several months via Zoom, um, because we are working on a really special project together. But before we dive into that, I just want to welcome Robin. Welcome to Dance Talk. Thank you so much. Delighted to be here. You're welcome. Um, what I'd like to do, Robin, before we start talking about the project we're working on, would you give a little bit of a background uh, for for everybody about how you started in music? Um, you know, what kind of studies you did, just to give everybody a little idea um, about who you are. Well, um, I began my musical studies playing violin and piano when I was in junior high school. And there were a series of, of, of moments of good fortune. Um, the first was that the, the, the choral conductor for my high school uh, did not have an accompanist. And so uh, he would play the organ and I would conduct and the, the chorus and I would conduct and different anthem every weekend. And I did that for, for several years. Um, and by so doing, I discovered that not only did I enjoy conducting, but that other people enjoyed it when I conducted. And so, uh, and, and of course I got used to the process of having to learn a lot of music very quickly. And mm -hmm. that, uh, that then led to a sort of continuing interest. And, um, while I was an undergraduate student at Oxford and, uh, I did quite a bit of, of conducting sort of, um, on the side, so to speak, from my musicological uh, studies. And then um, but that translated ultimately into a one of the coveted places at the Royal College of Music, where I studied with Norman Del Mar and Christopher Aidey, who were uh, completely different teachers, absolutely different, but, but very, very interesting. And... Um, and then uh, ultimately, uh, I, I came to, to the to the U.S. Uh, and uh, studied at Carnegie Mellon. Um, and then again, through you know good fortune, essentially um, began began to be able to work because uh, at that time in Pittsburgh, um, a number of conductors um, got sick or took sabbaticals or or died or what you know the things and 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 opportunities. Um, came about and and I was able uh, to begin working right away and um, and I really just never stopped from then on until until I retired from uh, as a professor at uh, Vanderbilt University um, last May and so now I'm I'm about uh, two thirds um, a windsurfer and one third a conductor <laughs> so <laughs> two thirds windsurfer that's good that's interesting. It goes. I, I, I see the connection. <laughs> yes, indeed. I now live on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So, so, um, oh. so yeah, it's my life now. How nice. You know, I just want to go back a little bit um, to how does one study to become a conductor? You know, and you said something, I read a quote, I don't have the quote in front of me, but I, it might've been on your website. I'm not sure. Um, but people, you mentioned that people enjoyed watching you conduct. And mm -hmm. so, and, and the, and the quote, uh, I think it was on your website said something to that effect, just, just watching you. And I know myself when I'm in an audience, I always like take a peek at the conductor if they're visible enough, you know? Um, so how does one go about saying, I want to conduct, I want to become a conductor? And then what are the studies like to do that? Right. So usually one starts conducting by, by serendipity. There's, there's some mm -hmm. need for some, for some reason, right? And you, and, and you have to step in for, for, for some reason, as was my case. 
And then if you get bitten by the bug, and I suspect it's a bit like ballet in that regard, mm-hmm. you it, it becomes uh, rather instantaneously addictive, and you think, well, this is this is very cool. How do how would I how would I pursue it? And in my case, that that sort of realization that I would like to pursue it took took a, a while to to develop. But um, it, it, then you're you're faced with okay, so so you know what is what is the the the, the path to such a thing? Well, um, the answer essentially is that um, you 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 do a whole lot of study about music more generally you'll study instruments you'll mm-hmm. study uh his musical history and theory and composition and um all, all those kinds of things um very intensely for a long time which is what i did at oxford and then uh, if, uh assuming you've 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 kept going having opportunities come to you to to actually conduct um there's there's that possibility that you you could um you could you could focus on that particular aspect of, of music making. And there are um, obviously programs that in this country and, and uh, in England that, 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 that will train, train people. The trick is, is to get into one of those programs, at least to get into a significant program. And um, in England at the time, there were very, very few available places you could really only do conducting at three different conservatories and they, they only would take a couple of people each year so it was it was um quite challenging to 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 get uh, accepted and um it's one of those chicken or the egg things usually they accept people who've done a lot of conducting but you know how on earth are you going to get to do a lot of conducting unless mm-hmm. you've had the training so it's sort of the, one of those things um but then then there's the whole question of you know what what is it you're actually learning when you're when you're when you're training to be a conductor. I mean, it, 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 but I suppose the 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 meta message of, of your question actually is what on earth do conductors do? Which is which, which you know that you, so you know what what would you be training to do? In fact, mm-hmm. um, so and that's a that is in itself a very interesting question. Mm-hmm peel that one back you get what is conducting mm-hmm. um it, it, in my years I, I spent 29 years as a professor at vanderbilt mm-hmm. and each year i would teach some a, a, a new class of, of of uh undergraduates um in their final year usually at, at vanderbilt um teach them in their conducting class and the first question i would ask them was was um so give me your definition of conducting and he, these students who, who'd been playing in ensembles probably for 10 years by that point and on a very high level often were completely stumped by that question because they never really yeah. thought about what it is that the, the, the person is doing and what the definition of what, what that would be. So my working definition um, comes from actually a, a wonderful conducting teacher, Jorge Mester, who was for many years the, the conducting teacher at, at uh, Aspen Music Festival. And his his definition is very very simple. It's um, the transmission of musical impulse through gesture. That's a great definition. Great definition. It has it has it has the advantage of being very succinct and really gets mm-hmm. to the point. And I would invite you to think about okay, so if that's the definition of conducting, mm-hmm. how does it differ from ballet? Mm. And yes. um, right. So the answer. Yeah. A lot of that answer has to do with all that preparatory work that that, mm-hmm. that one one does. So there's there's a whole skill set that has to do with how do you how do you study great big you know hour and a half length as in this project we're mm-hmm. doing sco- uh, pieces of music and yeah. what are you thinking about when you when you when you are studying them and and um, and then. Uh, it's, uh, there's another whole skill set that has to do with how do you how do you translate that into um, into gestures that would be helpful to to a group, and that mm-hmm. why would those particular gestures be helpful, and what is it a group is looking for um, are all uh, you know important questions. And mm-hmm. so the, the, I've given you a bit a little bit of a roundabout answer, but the the 
sort of, sort of trying to answer those questions is really what you're studying when you when you're studying to be a conductor. Figuring out what what those things are, and once you figured out what what it is you're supposed to be doing, um, mm -hmm. the the long process involved with with um, being able to do it um, directly and simply and um, and with with precision. Yeah, no, I think that's a great answer. It wasn't roundabout to me. I was, I was following because, and as you're talking, I'm seeing it. You know, I'm seeing different conductors I've, I've watched and been in the audience for. But I, I, I'll just say a little bit. I usually, I usually don't share this, but when I was in college, I was in a chorus, and yeah. so that was my little, for, you know, I had the conductor there. Now I'm, I'm seeing the conductor, and I just remember like just being glued to the conductor. So I, and I, I just know that experience as well. Um, you know, you're, you're keeping time of everything. You're to me, in my opinion, you have the whole thing in your hands there, literally, literally in your hands. Um, let's talk, go ahead. What were you going to say? Right. So, so, so that obviously there is a part of the skill set that has to do with, 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 uh, leadership because it doesn't mm -hmm. matter how how brilliant what it is you're doing or saying if no one's looking at you or paying attention to you it doesn't matter yeah. so ultimately when you're standing up there as a conductor all you have is is your body and, and i think that the, the yeah. analogy again with ballet is, is very is, is very interesting mm -hmm. there, there is there are obviously some differences um i've talked about the whole learning process the whole developing an idea of how the piece ought to go and that that kind of thing which which i i imagine anyway is not the really part of the skill set for for the for, for a ballet person but the the, the then there's the rehe the whole rehearsal process so it's mm -hmm. it, the orchestra will play at the first rehearsal and it's your job uh to make it sound wonderful, but also to serve the, the, in this case, the dancers, or in other cases, perhaps the uh, vocal soloists or, or, or instrumental soloists, mm -hmm. or simply the, the needs of the group. Um, and that's that's a really interesting thing too, because mm -hmm. there's you, you, conductors lead only by by consent. Uh, <laughs> if, if you've ever seen a conductor trying trying to impose by any other method, you'll know what a mm -hmm. disaster it is. Like uh, just mm -hmm. or instantaneously disastrous always. So you can only lead by consent, and therefore that you have to have a, um, the a kind of um, the ability the ability to uh, a leadership style that allows. Um, that, that that somehow gets people on the same page, um, yeah. Because they're only going to do it uh, well and um, and and with commitment if they believe in it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's 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 your job uh, to to um, to to convince all these people that that, that mm -hmm. at this moment this is how it's going to go, and everyone is convinced that that's how it's going to go, and they're all going to do it to to the max they can because yeah. um they believe in the in in how the product is go is going to be yeah. that especially an interesting process when you're with an orchestra with whom you know one is new so mm -hmm. for example i had the experience a few years ago a uh, wonderful experience of going to guest conduct um the singapore symphony which is a mm -hmm. fabulous orchestra and it was a fabulous concert hall um, but you know, ultimately, there's somebody flying you halfway around the world, and to to an orchestra that's every one of whose members are wonderful musicians and that that plays the orchestra superbly, and they're expecting something from you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have you know that that ability to instantaneously convince eighty plus people that that. Um, being there for that week with you is going to be a useful thing for them yeah. is part of the skill set. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I have to say it's very similar to bringing a group of dancers together to, um, they have an expectation of who's mm -hmm. coming in 
to teach them the choreography, to rehearse with them, to, and they, like you're saying about the music, they also have to believe about the project and be invested. There's that level of investment exactly. for everybody. And, you know, you know, you know when it's working and everything's, you know, together. And then you know when something's off. And it's so similar, you know, it really is. And um, I, I want to, you, you were talking about the rehearsal process, but I, I want to go even before that, when you get the music, when you get your score that you are going to, I get nervous. I'm talking about it now, Robin, and I get like nerves. <laughs> I do. When, the, when, when, the, when I see the conductor come out on stage and then, you know, that's so exciting. You're sitting in the ballet. I'm going to say the ballet because, you know, that's, that's my reference point. And I'm, you know, I'm so excited. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there's that hush. Mm -hmm. And then I get, I'm in the audience and I get nervous. And then there's that little tap. And then that first raise of the hands, and I get so I like get goosebumps when I'm waiting. So I just can only imagine what that is on your end. But I'm going to reference it for dance. It's that same thing, you know, preparing ahead of time, rehearsing the music. But you get that score. You get all those pages of score. What is your process? prior to even stepping into the room of rehearsal with all the musicians? Or do, do you have a process? Oh, uh, yeah, I very much do. So um, let's say, let's assume into score that, that nobody's ever played that, that mm -hmm. is like as, as with this um, Michael Corey project that we're, that we're mm -hmm. currently engaged in. Um, I'll receive the score. Uh, for me, I, I I actually don't usually work with a piano unless I really need to. Um, but I will, I will disappear for for, for long periods, and mm -hmm. um, and essentially what I'm doing is, is recreating that no, that notation as sound in in my head, and I'm I'm trying to figure out like. Uh, if, if you begin with usually you kind of let's this is a number ballet so there's a whole set of mm -hmm. different numbers right so you be, begin with a x number and you you would you would sort of read through it to yourself all of it and you try and figure out how it was constructed you know does the theme come back is there a transition of some kind what you know what what is how does it basically work once you've done that you 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 would take it in its constituent sections. I use, and I usually, on the advice of a, a wonderful um, uh, conductor, the late uh, Lauren Mazel, I will mm -hmm. typically begin at the end, and I will learn, let's say, for the sake sake of argument, the coda of that. Okay. That. Mm -hmm. I will I will study that in t until. I really feel I, I absolutely understand every single little mark that, that's been made on that page and why it's there and why it's not a different mark and, mm -hmm. and what it is that the, that the composer is trying to express uh, in that coda. And then when I when I really feel certain that I've got that down, I'll move back to the to the previous section and so on, and mm -hmm. I work my way back. And by the time you get to the beginning of the piece, it feels almost like you're remembering something rather than learning something anew. Um, and then when you actually get in performance, to go forward is, is actually much easier than if you've learned it from the beginning to the end. I, as I say, I learned that from the late um, Lauren Mazel. But um, that, that, and when I say I, I'm thinking about every note, I mean, typically, if I, if it's a new score, I will, I, I'll, I'll study the whole the whole thing, and when I've certain I've gone through that process, I will send the composer a list of the of mistakes that I think are mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. X note doesn't seem right to me. Are you sure about that one? You know, are you sure about this transposition right there? Are you are you certain that this articulation here should be different from that one there? And so so on. You know, I'll send them a whole great big list of of things that I think are, are errors. And uh, composers, in my experience, appreciate that so much because they, they know that, that, the, that that means that the conductor has really got into the weeds of, of this piece mm -hmm. and really thought about it and got into it. So once I've, 
once I'm certain that the text is right and that I understand how it goes, I'll then spend a, a while thinking about, especially about direction. So in every musical phrase, there's there's a, um, a, a, a low point and a high point. Let's call it the pianissimo climax and the fortissimo climax, right? Although it won't mm -hmm. be that. Point. And you'll be thinking, um, you'll be trying to think about where where those uh, high points would be in in a in a phrase. And and you usually I, I would begin by, where is that high point in the course of this whole movement? Where is that high point mm -hmm. in the course of the whole piece? Right. But but let's take it to a movement. Where is that high point in the movement? And then since the all music is made up of a series of phrases where is the high point in in each phrase so i i can be sure i know where i'm going at any at any point you know i could start the piece anywhere and i will know exactly where i am in the journey of that phrase and be able to go to the next one and each phrase is itself itself but also the upbeat to the next thing that happens and so you you kind of you 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 get on a, a kind of magic carpet, and and uh, and that whole process is all part of the of the preparation process. You mentioned orchestras, right? So they're looking, expecting something. Mm -hmm. This is the kind mm -hmm. of thing that the orchestra is looking for from the conductor, and they're not asking the conductor mm -hmm. just to tell them anything. They're just asking asking the mm -hmm. conductor to know where they're going all the time. Um, and this, mm -hmm. these things are not are not typically written in the music. The music does not say go here, but mm -hmm. you need to go there because otherwise you just get yeah. stuck and the whole piece pancakes. So you need to know where you're going in the micro and also the macro. And and if you do that, the 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 orchestra will immediately understand that there's something useful you have to offer offer them. Mm -hmm. That that's amazing because it really does the parallels not only to creating a piece of choreography. Mm. I mean, it you know the music and the choreography. I mean, they're married, you know. But right. your process and what you're doing sounds so familiar to how I approach it and how I'm working with Claire too. And and again, you know, Claire is the choreographer for the project we're working on, um, the Raffaella Ballet, and, and we'll dive into that in a moment. I promise, but. Um, just I know myself, you know, like when I get, the, when I look at everything and I'll be like, I'll say the same thing. Well, why is that happening here, Claire? Or why are we doing that? Or maybe we should try this or, you know, those same types of things. So it just sounds like the processes are so similar, but it makes sense. You know, when you really pick it apart and unpack everything, because the music, you know, the dancers have to dance to end with the music you know it's so similar and i and and i know the little bit we've worked together through these zooms but i'm so i'm i'm really excited and honored to work with everybody and get in that space and have it come to life because you know it's getting close right mm. and i know i know myself like i have I'm pointing like you can see where it is. I am pointing to my binder. I keep a binder. I'm like not the drop pop box gal. <laughs> I like print everything out, put it in my binder because I like to see it. And um, I have the music, the sheet music in there, you know, and I, I'm just, and I listen then to the little track. I have the music on tracks that I'm listening yep. to that Michael sent. And I will just listen to it and get a sense. You know, I kind of just, listen and then I go away from it and then I listen and then I go away from it and then I'll go back to the story and and see where Claire is you know it, it's interesting but the real work starts to happen when we're inside that studio you know um so it's exciting and do you have one of my questions that when when I was preparing for our interview do you and it sounds like you do know the music inside and out you know but all the different pieces of the orchestration, you know, like all the different instruments. Right. How does that happen? <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> I mean, the answer is with with a great deal of time and and um, mm -hmm. and 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 effort. I mean, 
it's also true though that I've worked with with Michael quite often now. Mm-hmm. So, um, for example, a few years ago I re- recorded the his second symphony in Bulgaria with the European Recording Orchestra, and mm-hmm. that was an, another occasion in which uh, the music was had never been played by by anyone literally, and um, uh, it, it, my job was to go there and unfold this music for them so in such a way that it would be instantly understood by them and and mm-hmm. make a recording right there um and i i uh, the, the, you'll perp- i'm sure that the, there's a good analogy with 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 dance here that the 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 thing is that in the end even at that you know that first moment it should seem organic to them like there mm-hmm, is no mm-hmm. the, the less they're aware of what you're doing the better right you yeah. just want it to yeah. all unfold mm-hmm. and then but 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 they know that the orchestras always know when 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 the the um the conductor really hasn't hasn't figured it out and it's kind of mm. you know going it's the same yeah moment, moment by moment and mm-hmm. and so yeah there's that there's also one more thing that yes you you can have a an extremely well organized idea of of how it's all going to go and how it's all going to unfold and how it will breathe um but then there's that moment where you actually get it with a group of musicians and always there's a, a moment of shock because <laughs> it's different in your head from from in acoustic mm-hmm. space it mm-hmm. just is and and many things don't actually quite work often tempi have to be modified a little bit because they don't quite work in in an actual acoustic space with 80 people you know you, it doesn't articulate properly and uh so often usually uh if there's going to be some adjustment it's fast music being put just a little bit slower because mm-hmm. Uh, it has to, it has to sound in in the acoustic space that that's typically what happens but but we're trying to, obviously in in this case with a ballet i have to be tremendously careful um because i have a huge responsibility to the dancers mm-hmm. to make sure that what whatever it is we do you know is 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 organic for them too and and obviously mm-hmm. uh, setting tempi is going to be a huge uh yeah. huge part of that right um i yeah yeah um so anyway there's there's that whole process and something you said i'm i was very pleased you mentioned it you you were talking about the 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 group i'm so grateful to duncan for including all of us uh we meet every every couple of weeks right so we Mm -hmm. all kind of aware of what everyone else is doing and it's felt very Mm -hmm. organic and and um it's been very helpful for me to know, yes, you know, what are, the, what are the set designers thinking, right? What are the costume mm-hmm. people, thinking? you know? Um, I'm yeah. hugely looking forward to seeing some choreography, obviously. And as you know, I've set yeah. aside uh, almost a week where I'm just going. I'm just yes. going to sit there like a fly on the wall and watch the watch you guys do your process. thing. Yeah, watch the I process. I know. And yeah, so which is exciting. That. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I have to, I have to echo what you're saying too, that, you know, again, it's been wonderful process. And, and again, let's dive into the, the Raffaella Ballet is what we're talking about for, for those listening to this, who aren't on the project listen, you know, my listeners who, who are waiting um, to hear about the project, the Raffaella Ballet um, will be in South Bend, Indiana. I'm heading out there in a couple of weeks. I can't believe it's like right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to have, like you said, these meetings and I find them so important. I'd rather be in on those meetings. So I, it just makes me personally feel more comfortable stepping into that environment and just to having that. I know I, I have an idea, like you're saying, I can, like you're saying, I see the sets what's happening and that's important for us as we're, you know, the choreographing everything, um, you know to see that and to know where booms and and flies are going and all those types of things, you know, um, that's so important. The depth of the stage, the width of the stage, how many wings we have, 
that's so vital. And then instead of just going in cold and being like, oh, here's our space, you know, to have that ahead of time and to be sharing it, it, it's become a real collaboration. Um, Even though we're all not, our hands are not in everything. It's, it just has such a nice feel to it all. So I too, am am quite grateful. I I agree wholeheartedly. And I must add um, that there's another, another collaborative group here, the, the um, South Bend Symphony and their, their management um, have been, we've been, Michael and I have been in constant contact with them and that's been, been a wonderful thing too. That's kind of, Mm-hmm. inevitably a behind the scenes thing but um mm-hmm. they've been they've uh, they've been uh, extraordinarily helpful um even you know in the most practical way like how on earth is this group going to fit into into a into a, a pit and um what yeah. you know what is the best arrangement of the musicians in that mm-hmm. pit that kind of thing um how, how many musicians should we have what where you know uh, uh what kind of percussion should we use you know, there's, there's a thousand decisions to be made, and it was very helpful to to feel that the South Bend Symphony um, were were invested in this project and, and yeah. were, um, were on our side as we tried to do it. Yeah, that's nice to hear. And you know, you made me think of something when you were when you were talking about that. You know, because pits come in all sizes, right? They come. You know, when you're in the orchestra pits, all. And here's my question. This just is just like a random question, you know, but when, when the pit is underneath, you know, you're not safe. Is it an exposed pit or is it, I don't remember. It's not an exposed or semi exposed. I haven't, I haven't been in the space yet. I I've don't, only seen yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. But, but, but my question is, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? No, I'm no, sorry. No, no oh, go right ahead. I, when you're, when the musicians are in the pit, right, and you're conducting, and and when they are underneath the stage, how are they hearing the dancers? About I know the music is so loud, you know they're listening to the music. Are they not paying attention to that? Does that become a distraction, or is or the stage stages? I don't know why I thought of this. It just randomly came into my head. But you know, are the are the stages constructed in such a way that there is a bit of soundproofing, so you're not hearing, but you do need to know what's going on? How does that work? I think I think essentially, I I am the sort of fulcrum point between what's going on mm, on stage okay. and what's mm-hmm. happening. And a good analogy would be um, with a concerto soloist in in a, in a regular classical concert. So there there mm-hmm. is a, in other words, a focal point for the musicians to get information about what the soloist is about to do. Um, mm-hmm. And that that focal point um, prov- can provide the musicians with the information they need to, to for the mm-hmm. for the timing they, ne- they need to create. And I, I think mm-hmm. the same is true in on a, on a ballet stage. So I, 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 will, I will be, obviously, I have a good view of what's going right. on. Yeah, really, yeah. Probably the best view in the house, perhaps. <laughs> and <laughs> probably um, right, yeah. And that 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 sort of um, central um, fulcrum is 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 really a part of my job. So it's not like it's not like doing, say, the recording of the second symphony. Mm-hmm. In that, uh, in that, there's this whole other group of collaborators that that that. Mm-hmm. Um, that I, it's my my responsibility to to make sure are being served and 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 collaborated mm-hmm. with in a, in a in a positive and and useful way, um, yeah. and and that's uh, that's that's you know part of part of the deal, um, and I'm hugely, yeah. which is why I'm I'm coming that whole week before to make sure I was, when you I know yeah what's happening and and what is supposed to happen and when it's supposed mm-hmm. to happen and, and how. I might set about timing what what I mm-hmm. do and what musicians do to um, to what's happening on stage. Yeah, and when you said that on that one meeting, when you had said you were, I, I that to me spoke volumes. I was like, that is amazing. I just was so happy to know you were gonna and you wanted to come to rehearsals. That just for me made me feel like, oh, good, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you, you may recall also that at that or different meeting, I. Uh, asked that the choreographer and the principal dancers come to some of the orchestra rehearsals. Yes. 
Um, yes, first, and I would... first, let, let's get it. Let's get the first one out of the way. But after that, yes, we would come yeah. and, and watch um, at the, and and be, be on stage. So you will, you, you're, you're, the dancers will will know what what they're going to be hearing from the pit. It, um, we'll have we'll have the yeah. the, the necessary um, uh, uh, speakers and so on. So so they will they will they will know exactly what they're going to hear and it won't be a shock to them at the dress rehearsal. Yep. That, and they'll, they'll also be invited into the process. So, so we, we yeah. they'll see how, how we got there, what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it will be helpful to, to the musicians to, to kind of develop already that collaborative um, sense that we've yes. spent such a, so many months now creating. Yes, I agree. I agree with you. And, and I do remember you saying that about coming and I'm all for, I'm all for it. So mm. you'll see me more than you'll be like, Duran, go <laughs> get out of here now. So, um, but let's now talk about Michael. So Michael Keurig, who is the composer of this beautiful music, I have to say, I can't, I don't want to give anything away except that I do find it quite beautiful. Mm. Um, but how did you two, how did you two come to be colleagues and 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 team team members right so when i arrived at uh, vanderbilt university um 20 uh, 30 years ago um uh, michael was uh, was actually already a faculty member and uh so we would occasionally collaborate i i i would sometimes take his pieces as with other uh, other composers um on tour um uh so i remember playing i played one of one of his pieces in siberia once i remember <laughs> with an orchestra in wow. siberia um yeah so we would so i would do it, you know I, I would work i would i would sometimes play michael's pieces and 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 along with other composers and and um and we would of course be interacting as colleagues and we got to know each other quite quite well over mm -hmm. the course of that time and uh i think it and he his style developed uh, over the course of that time and i i, I had a sort of catbird seat to that one so so watching it watching what he was doing and uh how how it evolved and one thing that has been absolutely consistent from the beginning is that michael was an absolute master orchestrator so mm -hmm. the, the music always sounds glorious i mean it, mm -hmm. it the actual it, it's it's almost like a sensual experience the the the, the way the, the the instruments um uh, um com, uh, uh, combine and mm -hmm. uh, that's a great skill that that not every composer does it as well as he does and and it's sort of a part of um what he does so well uh and that gives me a a, a great ad advantage um in in the sense that i already have been around both him and his music a, a long time so i kind of know what he's getting at usually um mm -hmm. what he's trying to say yeah um and what kinds of colors work well in 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 mm -hmm. his music what kinds of balances mm -hmm. um and so so yeah i come i come it, it's it's really useful to have that that, that background uh, for sure yes 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 and you know I, I have to say i think it's similar you know with with claire too you know i've worked with her on a couple other projects and then so to be brought in you know to work with her again on this project is just it's exciting. It's exci I talk about it now, and because it's so close, I get nervous when I talk. Like excited, well, nervous, you know. Well, uh, yeah. um, yes, and I, I have not worked with with, with Claire until this um, this event. But but there was a moment at the RGL last meeting in which she just did a little demo of something, and uh, mm -hmm. I forget what it was exactly. And and, my, and I thought, ooh, that's cool. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, yes. You know, Maybe very exciting to in big excited yeah. to, um, to get to that. Yeah. It, it's, and whole. it really is. Yeah. And it's interesting to 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 watch her work. And again, she's not here, so I don't want to talk about her while she's not here. But right. it's it's interesting to to watch her work. 
um, because she's, she gets laser focused and you have to be, and mm -hmm. she gets, and I enjoy watching her work because it's then like, I see, it's probably how you are with Michael, you know, that I see, it's almost like I see what's running through her head and I'm like, okay, okay. And, and it's funny because she could be working on something. She's rehearsing with the, the, the dancers. And I, sometimes I think the dancers will think I'm not watching. Cause like I'll either have my head down. I might be listening to the music more or a piece, you know, I'm just trying to not be influenced, but hear it. And she'll ask me something and I'll be spot on. Uh, usually <laughs> spot on with giving her feedback. And I think it's like, wait, was she even paying attention? But it's amazing how that happens. Like that's, that's the process of you're just so immersed. I think you become so immersed that you can close your eyes and see what's happening or you can, you know, look over there and, you're not maybe you get lost in the movement, you get lost in the music, but you're it's you're seeing how it's all coming together. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, that's that's just my thought. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't agree more. And the, the, the I think it's worth mentioning that 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 that, that, that sense of um, it's almost like you're in a time time moves at a different speed, right? When you're yeah. in that mode. Um, zone. That's, yeah, that zone, right? Um, so, I think that that experience of being in in that place is one of the great privileges of being a, a performing artist, for sure. Mm -hmm. The other people that have it are, are sports people, and mm -hmm. uh, you the, the sports people. Um, I mean, train train for that specifically. They mm -hmm. they there's all there are all these books about you know how to get into the zone and so on but what is yeah. the zone blah, blah, blah. but um usually uh i think it's a, a mistake but they usually don't specifically train musicians how to do that but but, mm, but rather mm -hmm. sort of it the ability to do it accretes over over time and and experience mm -hmm. and, and um uh training but but um the the the, the the feeling that one gets in in a, a really good rehearsal that one of those where you you were talking about earlier where everything is going and you really feel in flow and everything you know yeah. um and and also in performance that's it's it's really important that we all remember that those of us in this business that that that's not given to everybody that's that's a yeah. that's a privilege and Mm -hmm. if, if you walk around the street, you probably there's there's maybe one in twenty people that have ever ever actually felt what that feels like. Um, mm -hmm. Especially the performance thing is is um, is is a is a unique is a unique privilege. It it, it really is. Mm -hmm. And and I, I of course we all go through whatever we go through before the, the moment of performance, you know, for some people it's, you know, flu like symptoms or, you know, <laughs> out depression or you know, whatever it is they you know, whatever horrors right? they go through. Yeah. But uh it, it it it's rare to find a performing musician that that at the end of it is not in a state of utter elation. Uh and, yeah. and, you know that that feeling I think is um is what makes it so addictive. Yes, I, you know, I agree. And, and, you know, several things are coming to mind, you know, over, over the course of my own career, because I, I was a modern dancer, you know, before I got into to um, before I had my own dance studio. And then then I went like, full force into ballet, like I had ballet as a modern dancer. But then having to pass it on to my students, I really and I just love ballet. I just love it so much and I just recall moments performing because we would have the musicians in the modern company that I dance with we would have them or one single musician on stage with us mm -hmm. and our and that gives you a whole other aspect of things happening and that's a powerful thing to to have as well but I bring that up because working this way, you know, having access to 
the music, having access to the conductor, having access to the composer as he's creating the music, being with Claire and how she works and unpacks the music um, gives me, I'm learning, I'm continuing to learn how to enter into it in a, a new and um, more enriched way, which is mm-hmm. really exciting. And I think this kind of orchestration has that expectation. I think mm-hmm. that expectation is there because it's so layered, the story itself. Again, I'm not going to, my lips are sealed because everybody right. has to come see it, you know. But the story itself, we spent, Claire and I spent many, many hours going over that and over that and over that to make sure the story itself, before we even had music, was telling the story it was supposed to tell. Because that's such an important element too. You know, you don't want to do something that doesn't make, like, like you were saying earlier, that doesn't make sense or it's sticking out like a sore thumb. And you're like, why is that even there? You know, so there's so many layers. And I, again, I bring it out for people listening. There's so much that goes into this beautiful process. And like you're saying, it, it is a privilege. And I, I don't mean like we're privileged and above everybody else. I just mean it. Uh, it's something you know, I don't take for, yeah, I don't take it for granted. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. eternally grateful for it. it, it, it yes it, of course endless uh opportunities for stress and um and you know <laughs> all that kind of thing but um but i'm but i'm i'm grateful for for, for the opportunity yes. you mentioned something earlier about um about it being a modern ballet and having a musician on on stage right mm-hmm. um i imagine that's a, that's a very very intensely collaborative process, right? Mm-hmm, but, but mm-hmm. With you and the musician, I, I um, and uh, that that I think in an absolutely ideal world is is the that kind of sense of um of collaboration is exactly what we would like to create in, but yeah. with a group, right? With a with a symphony orchestra, yes. so we get that feeling because after all. You know, the composer can only do so much, right? So mm-hmm. the composer can write, let's say, uh, pianissimo. Now, pianissimo can mean a lot of things. It might be mm-hmm. scary. It might be uh, deflating. Um, mm-hmm. It might be anticipatory. It, you know, there's, there's so many things that a, that a pianissimo might, might convey. Now, there's going to be on people on stage telling this story. It's my... I feel like uh, that we have an opportunity here for, because we're collaborating so closely in this whole process, for the 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 intent of what the orchestra does to be in very very closely aligned with what it is that mm-hmm. the dancers are trying to express, so that we're all mm-hmm. on the same page at the same time and not not together in the sense of a of met- metronomically together or or seemingly mm-hmm. by precision but together in the sense that we're all um trying to say the same thing at, at that moment mm-hmm. and yeah. that, that it was to get that really um that i wanted to be there that week yeah yeah no i i it's it's really it's um it's it's exciting and it's it's a uh, wonderful opportunity um, and I, I just, I, I can't say enough about it. I really can't. And I'm so, um, I'm looking forward to learning from you. I mean, just being able to like, just see you work or see you think, <laughs> see like what's going on in Robin's head. Something's going on in there, you know, because I know, I know myself if, if I'm speaking for me, I can't speak for Claire, you know, if you're seeing something. I welcome that. I welcome your saying, well, I think musically, I don't know. I don't know what you would be saying. But if you just saw something, you know, I, I would welcome it because like you're saying, it's only to make it better. It's only to deliver this amazing, this amazing story, this amazing ballet. Um, and to, to really give this gift to, I feel, I feel, um, just to give this gift to Duncan and Ruth and their family. I really do. I just really feel um, such, such a honor to be able to do that 
for them. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And there's it, there's also the that 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 the pri privilege of being in a project that's bringing something new into the world. Mm -hmm. That's that. Uh, uh, I mean, can you imagine being at the being part of the premiere of Firebird <laughs> or something? I you know, know, which is my favorite, by the way. <laughs> right, and, and uh, you know. Um, yeah, and actually, I was thinking of that when I was talking about Pianissimo. I was actually thinking of of um, of Fiber, the the moment before the mm -hmm. finale, like before the before the wedding scene. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a very very intense Pianissimo, and and um, it, I, w one can imagine, you know, the the beautiful sets they must have had, and the, and the the people, mm -hmm. the dancers working so hard, and all the costumes, and the the, the the brilliant music, and the wonderful choreography, and that. That you, you, what I mean, how fantastic would it have been to have been part of that? Well, you know, here we have, here we have, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. such an opportunity. A lucky us, right? Yes, I know. I agree because we, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's part of dance history and music history. It really is. Like we're, we're this moment in history. We all, we all were. You look, how many months ago, none of us knew each other. And all our steps, all our steps brought us here together. And we are, we're creating this, this moment. It's, um, yeah, I could go on with philosophical things like that forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Is there anything before we finish up, is there anything I left out? I mean, cause I, I don't want to give the ballet away. I don't want to give the music away. I just want people to come see it, um, you know, and to, to really, to really just walk away moved and wanting to see more, 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 more. Is there anything um, that you would like to to say that hasn't been said? There, well, there's one thing. I mean, there are a lot of ways that Duncan and Ruth could have chosen to memorialize. Yeah, the sense of loss here. And, and they chose this way, and um, that, that, that's 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 a pretty much a unique choice, and 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 I think a particularly wonderful one. Um, yeah. So uh, so just to just to thank them, I think is the last thing we need to do. Yes, yes, we do. We thank you both, Duncan and Ruth, because I know you're going to listen to this. But we really do. Um, but thank you, thank you so much, Robin, for joining me on Dance Talk. It's I, I look forward to to um, meeting you in a few weeks and working together in person. Um, it's really been. I feel like this is just dipping my toe into to seeing how you work and getting this work done. Um, but we will be in it. My husband keeps saying to me how in a couple of weeks you are going to be in it. <laughs> We're going to be in it. So um, yes, I'm excited. Yes, to yes, the exclusion yes. of all else, as, as, as happens in these projects. Yes, great. Well, thank you so much, Robin. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Dance Talk. This is Dance Talk with Joanne Carey. Follow us, like us, and share, share, share. Thank you. Bye-bye. Powered by Riverside.